Hi, we're the Laser Robotics, and today we'll be helping you improve your robot judging session. We will be presenting our robot presentation, and along the way, be giving you some advice on how to improve your judging sessions. This is the design of the LaserBot 13. Over the past five years, we've improved dramatically. In our first year, we were just trying things out. Our robot was based off a tutorial model. It was non modulized it was tall, bulky, and it was not balanced. This is our very first version. In our second year, we were progressing. We had made modifications of popular design. We have a more symmetric and balanced robot, but we over-engineered the ports. This is our third version. In our third year, we were great. We had, our robot was completely original, extremely compact, and allowed for easy drop-down attachments. It also had hidden wires. We won first place in the Robot Design Award in qualifiers and states. In our fourth year, we were perfecting. Our robot had relentlessly improved. It was tall, had a higher center of gravity, and we won the states in robot game and qualifier. This is our 11th version. This year, we are exceeding. We have improved stability, we have lowered the center of gravity, we have a systematic evaluation of our robot design, and we won the qualifier and states. This is our 13th version. With each iteration, we learn from the designs of inefficiencies of the last to improve the next. Our robot is a perfect 17 by 18 square. The wheels are as thin as possible, and it's also as compact as possible while still maintaining stability. It's durable without sacrificing space, no wires show, and it has a symmetric design. We have two color sensors for better field navigation, six points of ground contact for stability, flat sides, and weight on the back to help balance out attachments. Our robot is very efficient for multiple reasons. Some of these are, are that our attachments drop on using gravity and are secured by using upweighted facing axles. Setting up in the launch area is really easy because of our square shape and our motor space up making it easier to transfer power. Our gears also lock into place instantly using upward facing axles. As for our attachments, we use as many passive mechanisms as possible and we create our attachments in a way that uh, utilize the 360 degree capabilities of the robot. We have gears that lock into place and our motors are used for multiple things. We also use a lot of linear motion to solve missions. Sometimes good designs have to be sacrificed to further improve upon them. So, new ideas are tested in multiple ways. Attachments are constantly being improved on to improve reliability and efficiency, and we also have countless versions of every single attachment. In this picture, you can see two different designs of our second trip attachment. Although many of the key features are similar, they're, uh, one of them is completely redesigned. For our programming this year, we use a Spike Prime Python. It is a better alternative to block coding because it allows for more complex code. For our air correction this year, we have two main air correction functions, which may include line falling and gyro forward. An air correction system allows for easier field navigation and accuracy. Use PID logic to allow for maximum smoothness. All commonly used pieces of code have a dedicated function to keep the code as clean as possible. We had frequent comments to make debugging easy. Over the years, we have truly decoded proportional integral derivative. All motors are inherently inconsistent because of backlash, which is an unavoidable issue. When the robot is driving, the inconsistency builds, which leads to inaccurate navigation. PID is a universal and flexible error correction logic. Proportional means the bigger the current error, the bigger correction. This is the most commonly used and well understood piece of code. Integral is the bigger cumulative error, the bigger correction. This can find drifts in values and detect when the robot slowly deviates away from its target. Derivative is the bigger change of error and the bigger correction. This will react to sudden changes and outliers in data. We can fine tune these PID parameters to suit our needs. Over the past five years, we've learned that our robot may look good, but not function efficiently. So we run important aspects of the robot navigation 10 times each, which may include line falling, turning, moving straight, every time with or without attachments, and at different speed levels. We record a pass or fail on an Excel file, we calculate that percentage of success, and use that percentage of success, of success as a performance score. We use this score to pick the most practical and consistent option, which should either be hardware or software. For mission strategy this year, we tried to leverage line falling as much as possible and reduce travel distance to reduce time. In the end, we completed 5 trips, 15 missions, in 2 minutes and 30 seconds with a high score. We used a lot of packing mechanisms this year, which are mechanisms that preserve as many motors as possible, and use the motion of the robot to, and gravity to power missions. We used these to complete more than 2 missions in every trip. We also used a lot of one-way doors, which are a type of passive mechanism. We use one-way doors to, to lock onto objects or missions without the use of motors, and we use this as an easy way to bring up or drop off units around the map. For alignment, we use alignment mechanisms to align with the basis of missions for accuracy. 
when we've been designing a trip, what we do is we design an attachment, program, test the try and error, and repeat. That's the end of our presentation. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more like this. Jerry, where is uh, my thing?